Hello again, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at um, Pentax 6x7 camera. Um, these are really, really popular again now, 15, 20 years ago, you couldn't give them away, but thanks to YouTube there's uh, a huge amount of interest in these. But they do have a number of issues. Uh, remember that these were used by professionals, um, well-heeled amateur and enthusiastic photographers probably didn't buy these, they were bought by people who earned their living from photography, magazines, publishing houses, that kind of thing. So they're pretty well used. This is a, an original 6x7, this one does have the mirror lockup on the side here, so this is uh, sort of the second type. Uh, the original one didn't have a mirror lockup. So this dates from 1975 through to the early 90s. So this is anywhere between um, roughly 30 to 50 years old. This camera has probably led a hard life, judging by the amount of brassing, etc. on it. I have a number of issues with them. Um, they do rely on a battery to run. And if the battery is flat, what tends to happen, this is where the battery lives underneath here. You've probably seen this in a thousand videos. Four LR44s and four SR44 batteries, which is just four of them to put together into one housing. Um, well, they're six volt, yeah. So if the battery is a bit flat or it's drained or if there's no battery in it, um, if you go to fire the camera, and yeah, you do need film in these, but there is that trick where you advance the the, uh, the frame counter past zero with the back open, close the back while holding it there, then it will it will fire. So what happens is this happens, it stops. And it's really annoying if you've got film in it, and that was the issue with this camera. It would do this repeatedly. And what's happened is, as you can probably see, the mirror has not completed its travel, but worse than that, the second shutter curtain hasn't moved. So at the moment, if there was film in there, it will be exposed. So you end up with a blank frame that's totally overexposed. All you get is the, the back in plastic, basically. With the price of film and getting 10 shots per roll, particularly if you're shooting colour, that is really, really irritating. So low battery power or a dead battery or a problem, a fault like this one had, even with a fresh battery, was doing this maybe three times on a roll of film. It gets very, very frustrating. There is a way to reset this. I've seen some YouTube videos where they've done this wrong. There's a little reset button here that you push in. That will flip the mirror and then at the same time press the shutter release and that will reset the camera and send the second curtain across. But obviously by the time you've done that, your, uh, your shot is ruined. If you've got a full battery, which I have here, a full battery, pluses at that end. It will fire normally. It's on quite a slow shutter speed. Obviously there is a battery check on it. Always carry a spare battery with these. The last thing you want to be is out somewhere and uh, you can see that battery's good. So to solve this problem, it's basically an electrical problem. We've got power, but it's not doing what it should be doing. So the first thing we do is we're going to clean the contacts underneath this switch here, which is the shutter speed selector switch. And we're also going to clean some contacts that are hidden behind these panels here. To start with this one at the top, there are three screws that hold these in. They're normal flathead screws, although you'll need quite a small screwdriver to get in there. Undo those three screws and then this will come off like so. There's a washer that sits underneath that. Obviously I've been in here and done this before making the video. And then this end cover, if you slide it out and then it will, it says, <laughs> you can slide it out to the side and it will um, come up like so and it will reveal the inside of the selector switch 
and you can see all around here there's these contacts and this is the selector so you can see there I'll zoom in on that there we go that's a bit better so you can see each of these represents the shutter speed timing basically and when you turn the switch it moves this across these points so what you have to do there or what I did there was I got some contact cleaner and this is WD-40 specialist contact cleaner and cotton buds or um, Q-tips so I think they call them across the pond so you just get a couple of these spray on some of this onto these onto these clips and onto the Q-tips and then just gently gently clean them there was a lot of dirt on these contacts they, they were pretty dirty um, it's quite disgusting but you just clean around here you don't want to get liquid everywhere on there although contact cleaner does evaporate but just very gently clean these move the uh, move the selector about and give that a bit of a clean as well and you want it to move so that there's no clean there's no black marks left on these contacts down here you can see that this is the uh, this is a micro switch down here that triggers the, um, the battery check light and you connect that into there these are called micro switches little bitty things but yeah that turns the light on for the battery check the other issue I had with this camera is, is that the metering prism when I put the meter prism on the TTL prism it wasn't getting any power and I know the prism was good so it has a problem with that as well and the prisms connect to these cameras via some prongs on the base that connect to these connectors at the back of here oh yeah here's a metering prism so as you can see, it has prongs on here, spring-loaded, that connect to the camera body here, but they also connect through these two at the front here. This connector is used for when the lens is set to the auto setting, and this connector is used for when the lens is set on the manual or the stop down mode on the lens so that when you adjust the aperture in auto it remains fully open and it will close automatically when you press the shutter release button in the manual mode when you adjust the, sh the, uh, the aperture the aperture will actually close down if you set it on f22 the viewfinder becomes very dim a bit like depth of field preview kind of thing so that's a major difference the camera meter head knows what the aperture you selected is by this chain up here with a little connector on it and this is the thing that breaks that people seem to go on about an awful lot it's a real pain to replace this chain this one isn't broken so no finder no lens it sits there when you put a lens on it moves over to here. This is the smallest f stop, so something like f2.4 would be up this end, and f32 or f45 or something would be down this end. So it's one of the reasons why you put the finder on first and then put the lens on. And if you're taking the finder off, you remove the lens and then you remove the finder. But the camera chassis, the body, the metal part, is actually earth, a bit like in a car. So you only ever get the positive flow in. There is a connection on this one, which I think is just a negative. Um, it doesn't seem to serve any purpose, but maybe there's plans for something else. So these are your two connections, and this is your earth. So I found that the wire on this one had rotten away and just old age had broken. So there was no power going there. And also these earth pins at the top here 
these were very very dirty so it wasn't getting any power um, you can remove this part there's a couple of screws at the back Let's zoom back out again it's a bit too close for comfort that and there's some screws on the inside here as well and then this section will just come off with any little piece of plastic and then you can see where the three wires connect to there and this is the, the one that was broken so it didn't work I never really used top down but uh, I guess when you're using tubes and things you'll have to because the lens at the end doesn't communicate back to the camera I don't think so that's another problem that I've fixed on this camera if you find your metering head doesn't work it's probably these connections or these being dirty right we've done that part we've done that part now we've got to sort out all the gubbins in here relating to what's going on and why we have an issue down there with the camera first of all you need to remove some of the leather finishing you'll see I've already done it this is how it should look if you've got a very soft sort of tool not metal either something that's wood or plastic you can catch a corner and they use kind of contact adhesive so you can peel bits off so this was obviously the bit that was on there so I gently removed that and this was the part that goes up at the side up here so you can see I've removed I've removed that part as well so that goes sits there like that and I've just given these a bit of a clean up on the back I've still got a bit more to do to get all the old glue off before I reattach them there's a couple of screws here for this panel move that out of the way as well it's already cracked but that wasn't me somebody else cracked it there's a little panel here that uh, needs to come out held in by just a couple of screws so that needs to come out and then on this side there's a load of screws here um, that come out this is the mirror lockup switch the one everybody says gets in the way but I've never really had that issue and then there's some screws on the inside of here as well there and there camera's not focusing very well today you can see the screws there and there that come in and again use a, a plastic sort of tool to go in obviously I've taken all these screws out because I'm in the process of putting the camera back together so gently go in this I, this I found is the worst part up here by where this um, sort of lock for the, uh, the viewfinder is this is kind of the worst bit to get out there is a spring behind this as well so you need to be a little bit careful here to make sure when you take it out that the spring doesn't go flying anywhere and hopefully we manage to keep the spring you can see that there's a little spring behind that because that's what makes it pop in and out so that part comes off it's not difficult you just got to be careful I quite like these to work on because they're such a big camera um, even with my big old fat sausage hands um, there's plenty of room they're not like some of these other cameras where there's just like no room to move at all absolute nightmare to work on but these ones they're, they're, they're not too bad actually I found this to be a relatively easy process. This just lifts straight up. Just comes out. This is metal. Those are plastic. That's a mirror lockup lever on the back there. Sorry, the um, the reset. But don't forget, if you're going to use the reset, hold it in push the shutter release I've seen a lot of people who push the reset in and yeah it flips the mirror up but it doesn't reset the second curtain so looking inside here what do we have of interest well let's zoom you in a little bit contact cleaner cotton buds q-tips again 
There's a couple of little micro switches. There's one here. And it's very hard to get to. And in the end, I just ended up spraying it and hoping. There's another one down this side as well. Which is quite hard to get to. And then, this is a solenoid. And the top of that needs to be cleaned. And the way to get it up out of the way is if you've got a flat battery. When you fire it, you'll see that this is what happens. It stays up. So you can get in there with your contact cleaners. Sorry about that. That's eBay again. Um, your Q-tip cotton bud soaked in contact cleaner. And you can get in there and clean this in there. And you'll notice on the reset, when you push it, focus when you push it all it does is just move backwards and forwards like so so you can see that it's sent the mirror back up if you, you can complete it from there other than that, clean that connection there on the top of this. Clean that connection there. Just generally inspect it. You're looking to make sure, looking for a bit of wear, dirt, anything in the mechanism that's a problem. That looks fine. Uh, put the battery back in. I say. You can set a faster shutter speed on this than these slow ones. I found it was happening mainly on a 60th. Um, that seemed to be the problem speed for me, so I think that wherever one of these is a 60th, this just follows around in order. So this first one here would correspond with X, which is the flash sync speed, the 30th by the way. Um, so that corresponds to that. And then it follows it around, it goes B, one, two, three, all the way around. So a thousand is going to be, sorry, it's the other way around. A thousand is going to be this one at this end. And this one here is going to be the, the X speed. And that one there should be B. So I'll turn this around like so. Ooh, focus. That one should be B. That's one second. What am I doing? One second from B and X. Oh, this was on, on the wrong. I'm on the wrong setting. Map it. That should be B, which it is. So you can see this follows. You don't really need to remember where this was. You can just set this to a speed somewhere between. Um, because there's three of them, a quarter and an eighth, and maybe possibly a half to get to the three. They're kind of equidistant screws in these when you put it back together. But yeah, that's your your shutter speeds around there. You'll notice on the dial, there's something else I've seen people saying, oh, you know, I got to use a cable release to do a 20 second exposure or all this kind of rubbish. You, know, you don't. There's this space between the X and the thousand, which on the camera corresponds to this sort of no man's land here. And if you put it on that, it puts it in the T setting. So if you push the shutter release down, the shutter's now open, the mirror's out of the way, and it's exposing the film. And you can time it for as long as you like on a, a watch or a smartphone timer or something. So you can leave it like that. You don't need to touch the camera on the tripod or anything else. When you want to finish the exposure, you just got to push it again. Oh, no, no, you don't push it again. Sorry, scrub that. Too many cameras. You just turn the dial back to one of these, and that will close the second curtain and drop the mirror back down. So yeah, you don't press the shutter to shut to stop it. You press the shutter to start. Oh, yep. So put it into T mode.
mode. Press the shutters to start. Go off, have a cup of tea, cigarette, or whatever. When your exposure's done, come back and just turn it like that to close it. But bear in mind, all the time that shutter's open, it is using battery power. So um, I wouldn't do like four hour timed exposures using this. I'd use a more mechanical shuttered camera like an RB or a 35mm Olympus or nickel mount or something like that, which I had a look at yesterday. But yeah, you don't need to use, um, you know, keep your finger on a cable release for 10 minutes or whatever. That's just stupid. Right, that solves most of my issues. I found since cleaning these contacts, I don't get that issue anymore. It does behave itself now. I haven't put a test roll through it yet. I've got, um, I've still got three rolls of HP5 in the fridge. I've still got some Rodinal and some Adafix, so yeah, well, once the weather warms up a bit, it's really heavy frost this morning, um, I will get out and shoot these, but yeah, it's, it's working really nice again now, and i got the meter on there working as well, which is something I'm really happy about. Putting it back together is just a reversal of what you've taken apart. It took me maybe half a day to figure out how to take it all apart. It's not a difficult job. It's, not, so it's one of the easiest cameras to work on because of its size. Um, you're not struggling with small spaces really. It's a very basic simple camera. No metering as standard. It does rely on electrics for the, uh, the shutter. But yeah, very, you know, just look at all the room in there. It's crazy compared to some of this stuff. That you, you, you can't see things let alone get to them. In this. Yeah, it's a very simple, easy camera to work on so far, he says. Famous last words. So there you go, folks. That's the video for today. I think my time's up. Yeah, 20 minutes. Um, comments, questions, queries, etc. down below. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Oh, don't forget to subscribe and they're taking away the dislike button, which I find really annoying. I like to know when people don't like what you're doing. But yeah, hit the like button if you like, and subscribe if you want to see more of this. Normally I just review cameras, but this one was irritating me because it was wasting a lot of money on film. And uh, I quite like using it. I've got quite a, lot, quite a lot of lenses for it. These have to come from Japan now, so it's quite risky buying them because the Japanese tend to say things are mint and... You know, it's mint, but it's got fungus, or it's mint, but it's got balsam separation. It's like, well, that's not mint to me. So you need to be careful buying from Japan. But it's quite hard to find this sort of stuff in the UK. I've got to admit, I think probably a lot of it got junked. Like I say, 15 years ago, you couldn't give it away. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Blah, blah. Waffling on a little bit. See you in the next one. Ta-ra.